Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoints Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. We are coming at you on February 17th, 2021. Uh, Always interesting times, uh, especially with Biden in office. But before we get to any of the uh, uh, news of the day. Uh, let's uh, introduce our panel to you. Up in our upper left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett, who is a pilot in the state of California. By and the way, you- Jason, I like your haircut. Is that a legal haircut or is that a black market haircut? <laughs> it's, a, it's a black market haircut because the barber was unlicensed. <laughs> oh, my God, yes, yes, oh yes. so you you yeah, must probably. have gone the same place, the same place as Nancy Pelosi went to get her hair done. Did you do that? <laughs> Actually, huh? no, 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 well, you know. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, my, my son, uh, where we've been at home for a while. And so I've been trying to incentivize him, give him, you know, jobs to do and other things like that. And so oh. uh, we, we we ordered a razor and some other stuff. And he's this is his third try at cutting hair. So he's actually getting better. Oh, okay, <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah, that's a good thing. That's yeah. a good yeah. thing. That's good. Incentives so always work. Incentives always so, work. Yeah, this is just between us because he's unlicensed. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want Gavin coming and arresting my kid. <laughs> oh, poor, poor, poor boy, poor boy. Oh, my God. Not Sorry to mention, kid already. Not to mention I, I don't know how old your son is, but it's probably in violation of child labor laws. Too. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Damn, this what's wrong up. with you? Damn, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I see uh, my my panel's giving me a haircut today. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. well, let's, let's jump into the news of the day. Uh, uh, no. So, uh, one of the crazy. Jason, things- Jason, yeah. could I interrupt for one second, please? For one second, please. Um, on a serious note, um, I don't know how you guys feel about Rush Limbaugh, but um, he was he's oh. been an intellectual um, um, favorite of mine, uh, someone I followed over the years. But he died today, and um, oh. yes. I just wanted to say, may he rest in peace. Um, it, um, it it saddens some of us. I yeah. was once yeah. in a, to, just to let you know, I was once in a commercial for the Rush Limbaugh show, quite frankly, many, many years ago in the, in the early 1990s. It was unpaid, but um, I, I was in a, in, in, in a commercial. But anyway, I, I just want to let Rush rest in peace. Sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, sorry that, about that. that right. That's a, yeah. Th- thanks, Leon. I, um, was listening to rush since when he was in sacramento when he was unknown and then he got the job in new york right and uh became famous after that and uh i I listened to him for years uh yeah almost daily and sometimes daily and um i got a little off from his message uh when i became more uh sensitive to you know the wars we were constantly getting in but uh he's always entertaining nonetheless yeah. um and uh that's where i was introduced to walter williams and um uh walter's friend uh thomas Sol. thomas Sol. thomas Sol, yes sorry yes. and uh yeah d- just uh, uh all the other th- there was other two uh, other libertarians that he brought on the show including yes. peter, peter schiff i believe he, he brought in Yes. Um, and so, yeah, uh, the, he in, through Rush Limbaugh, I was introduced to a lot of libertarian uh, thought uh, early on. And so, um, yeah, he uh, it's tragic that he died because he's just one year older than I am. Not even yeah. a year, probably. Uh, we're very close in age. So uh, uh, sad to hear this. Um, cer- certainly went too soon. Yeah, well, indeed, he's, uh, he's indeed, been battling indeed. cancer, I think, for a while, and I think he, he was awesome. for the last year. Or yeah. So actually, he was first diagnosed with stage four cancer, and um, it's been it's been a it's, it's been a tough road for him since um since that time. I believe it was about a year ago or something. He was he was diagnosed, and it's been a struggle ever since. Yeah. So um, well, and and it's it is interesting. He does have a tie to Sacramento. I mean, that is sort of where yes. he made his name here in Sacramento before he moved on to the national. 
uh, EIB network or whatever it was yeah. that uh, yeah. he was doing his show from. But uh, it's funny, too, because you mentioned Walter Williams. And it's, uh, you know, I had uh, I, I listened to his show uh, uh, quite a bit when I was younger, but um, I, I kind of drifted away from it later on. But as I sort of got a little more libertarian, but but uh, it's funny. Walter Williams had been a frequent guest host yeah. on his show. And yes, I didn't he know was. who Walter Williams was at the time. And later on, I, I discovered that he had been, uh, you know, on um, Free to Choose with Milton Friedman. And right. then I was just like. Wow, Walter Williams is a host on Rush Limbaugh's show. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's amazing. Yes. But uh, um, yeah, Walter Williams also passed away this last year. And we also lost George Schultz just uh, about a week ago or so. Too. Yes, so, that's right. Uh, yes, A lot yes. of interesting people have been yes. uh, passing recently. And, uh, while, and while Rush himself was not, um, um, was, was, Rush was more of a conservative than a libertarian. But I think yeah. his fight for... Mm -hmm. For smaller government and and for individual freedom, I think there's good overlap with with libertarian philosophy. Mm -hmm. Quite frankly, yeah. So Definitely. he'll be he'll be surely missed. He'll be surely missed. I, I know one other thing. I haven't heard uh, Ben Shapiro's show today, but he tends to uh, give Rush Limbaugh some credit for his, uh, I guess, development as well. I think Ben Shapiro is a little more on the libertarian side than Rush, but he's he's somewhere yes. in between libertarians mm -hmm. and conservatives. So yes, uh, yeah, true, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, well, you know, uh, let's to honor him. Let's jump into a uh, subject that's near and dear to conservative hearts: uh, the Second Amendment. So that's uh, a topic that. Uh, uh, I wanted to get into today because we've been hearing a lot of noise from the Biden administration um, about potential restrictions on Second Amendment rights going forward. And uh, that's actually sparked some conversation uh, from the right about sanctuary cities uh, related to the Second Amendment. So essentially the way the left had their sanctuary cities, uh, places like San Francisco and such, where uh, local law enforcement uh, would not uh you know, uh, prosecute or hold people for for immigration violations. Uh, uh, you know, I guess now there's uh, some talk about cities on the right. If if Biden gets his way on some of these things, uh, potentially having sanctuary cities related to gun laws. Uh, so I know, Tim, this is definitely a subject that's near and dear to you. So uh, I'll have you jump in first on this one. You mean because I'm an ammo sexual? How in God's name? How in God's yeah. name do you get there from the statements Jason just made? How? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm just agreeing with Jason. And uh, the thing about being an ammo sexual is, hey, it, it came from birth, you know, so so give me a break. All right. I was just born this way. OK, so you liberals, I'm, I'm just born to like guns and it came from my my family. And so it's in your I, genes. It's, it's in, in your genes. genes. It's so, in my genes. It's in my genetic makeup. So, yes. So, Tim, you blasted your way out of the birth canal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Although I, I didn't I don't remember. But uh, anyway, um, <laughs> my my parents uh, my pa parents fed me a lot of uh, pheasant and quail growing up, so <laughs> there, there's that, you know. So um, <laughs> so the uh, yeah, um, you know, he's got a bunch of proposals. Uh, I don't think much of it will pass, if any. Um, you know, it could be another one of those things. It just drives gun sales up through the roof. You know, yes, it's, uh, and ammunition is. Uh, it's just it's the demand is so high right now it's crazy never seen anything quite like it um but uh the uh, so if assuming that it so here's they're, they're trying to head it off at the pass they're just saying okay we're gonna do what you liberals did with the whole sanctuary city thing or sanctuary state okay there's that. So I just love that you know just from the standpoint that it's just throwing it right back. Uh, a, a tactic pioneered by the by the left, and now the uh, the right is going to pick up that banner and utilize it uh, against the left and their their preoccupation and myopic focus on um, you know firearm related deaths and issues so on and so forth. Um, 
so uh, there's that. Then, um, the, you know, because they're they're talking about confiscation and that kind of thing, you know, I, which I, I really don't think it's going to pass uh, for numerous reasons. But um, but let's just say that it does. OK, well, where is the history behind that? Well, once again, you know, one one easy, you know, one low hanging fruit in history is prohibition. So there was uh, the only way that the feds could enforce it is with cooperation from the states. And th that's that's just the way it is with most of these federal laws is uh, they require um, cooperation from the state and the local governments. So if you don't have that, just like with prohibition, that's what spearheaded the uh, uh, um, complete uh, reversal of that uh, anti-alcohol sales law, um, whatever the proposition was, um, and uh, whatever the proposition was, it prop prop thirteen, I think, or not uh, the thirteenth amendment. amendment, or yeah, the, amendment. Was it the thir thirteenth that brought it back. I can't remember, but th there was a liquor store called the thirteenth amendment or the twelfth amendment or whatever it was. What a great name for a liquor store, right? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the so, uh, but it, it what spearheaded that whole thing was the lack of cooperation in enforcing these federal prohibitions against alcohol by the states, and that's again, uh, th that's within their per what's it called uh, their prerogative. It's uh, it's part of their makeup is to. Uh, to also follow the constitution. And so if they feel that it's unconstitutional, I know people that, that don't understand the constitution and don't understand the whole state's rights uh, issue is uh, they, they don't, they think it's up to the, uh, the judiciary to, uh, to figure out if something's constitutional or not. No, it's not. It is up to the judiciary. It's up to the federal government. It's up to the state and local governments to enforce what they feel is uh, the constitutionality of a law or the lack thereof. Okay. And so it, everybody's and, and their default, according to the constitution, their default fallback position has to be on the side of freedom constitutionally. Okay. Well, it's not freedom to take firearms and which are personal possessions away from people forcefully under with the point of a gun. Uh, <laughs> the good guys guns, they say, I guess, you know, because the police <laughs> are going to be the ones the police are going to be the ones enforcing these idiotic laws if they ever come to pass, which I don't think they will. But if they do. Police have have uh, already um, declared that they're they're not going to enforce them. Whether that would happen to you know if, if push came to shove, who knows? But it's interesting. It'll be interesting to watch it unfold. What do you think, Leon? You know, honestly, honestly, it it saddens me that in a country founded on liberty, founded on liberty. In a country where we have a Second Amendment that clearly states that we have the right to bear arms, that we are now at a point where we have to find sanctuary states and cities to protect the Second Amendment. I do not know, I do not understand why the Second Amendment is treated any differently from the First Amendment. The First Amendment gives us our right of free speech. Well, I guess that is under attack right now. So I guess uh, similarly, the Second Amendment is under attack also. Yeah. So, but it, it, it is sad. It is really sad to me that we are going down this path where we think that we have to find this boogeyman called the NRA. And if we could defeat the boogeyman somehow or the other, we're going to find that utopia where gun violence will be gone and we all be fine and everything will be wonderful in this utopia that the left is trying to create for us. It just saddens me that this is the part we are going along. This woman in that video that you sent out, Jason, said that how, oh, the, um, if, if, if these things, if these sanctuary cities and states spring up, it's gonna, it's gonna, um, it's not gonna take into consideration all of the people who are affected by gun violence. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, look at the sanctuary cities that you guys have been creating all of these years. 
and all the people who are committing crimes just walking across the border and con some of them continue to commit crimes while they're here you know in our country illegally you don't you consider that impact also or do you consider the impact upon wages of uh, people just walking across the border and getting jobs here depressing wages for living breathing americans do you consider that impact too this is the hypocrisy of the left this is the hypocrisy of the left and it's plaguing us it's plaguing us both in their in terms of their hypocrisy and it's plaguing us in the sense of how they are trying to destroy our blessed constitution well it's funny too because if you look at the constitution and you were talking about the first amendment sort of being eroded right now with all kinds of restrictions on speech based upon what they think think you're thinking when you're speaking but you know it's funny because that second amendment really is uh, almost the insurance on the first amendment <laughs> you know? exactly. Uh, I mean, exactly you know if you don't have that second amendment you know all you can do is kind of shake your fist at the government <laughs> if they take away your first amendment <laughs> no. oh but but well, you know, oh sorry yeah uh, tim yeah, Jay, it's, it's, um, the, all the amendments, which basically uh, outline some, not all, of the rights that we possess based on our, um, our humanity, uh, that, that we're human beings, that we have these, these rights that would come with our birth, the birth rights. And uh, apparently the left is, uh, you, you, I think you have it coming up, it's, it's queued up there, where they're going after the 14th Amendment as part of our list of things to discuss so so yeah leon uh, we're talking the second now uh, and the first uh, leon brought up and so jason what would be the 14th amendment that we're about to discuss <laughs> the equal protection under the law clause yes yes okay yes. yeah well 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 i mean we, we we may joke about it but that equal protection thing is on under on also under serious attack Okay, yeah, it's that on a serious, point. serious attack yeah. where that, they think so. So, yeah, that, I know that's the point you're making, Tim. Yeah, but, but the whole point these people want to tell us what, what lawlessness we should accept and what we should not. Yeah. Or oh, the rats over the summer, yeah. the rats over the summer that was good and wonderful. But you know, the rats on Capitol Hill on January 6th that was awful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, they yeah. want to tell us what lawlessness we should accept. Yeah. Well, you know, um, as, as far as the uh, lawlessness issue is concerned, um, another issue that's sort of related to this whole Second Amendment thing. I mean, you know, it, it is odd that in a lot of the cities where they have the most gun restrictions, places like Chicago and such, they also tend to have a lot of gun <laughs> violence there. And speaking yes. of which, there's uh, a lot of these cities that have been pushing defund the police are now in a situation where they're having to second guess some of that because there has been a lot of shootings in a lot of these places uh, lately. And one of them is Minneapolis. That was one of the ones that was sort of spearheading some of this defund the police. And they have recently, I guess, decided that they have to fund the police more. I guess there's probably some, a little bit of uh, controversy within their city council or whatever. But I mean, I think they recently approved an extra 6.4 million <laughs> for the police. So, yes. so yes. Uh, you know, you guys have any uh, thoughts on the whole defund the police? <laughs> well, go ahead, Leon. I, I talked enough. No, no, it's not, it's not matter talking enough. I, I, that, that doesn't bother me too. Honestly, it really doesn't. But you know, but you know what is amazing about this? So now, now that they came up with the little utopian idea, let's defund the police. And the predictable result came out. Crime just went through the roof. In Minneapolis and in other places where this defund the police nonsense was going on and going on strong. And they and they are shocked. Yeah. They are shocked by the violence that resulted. If you don't have police officers, people with guns walking around <clears throat> protecting us, keeping law and order, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think the criminals are stupid? They may be criminals, but they are not. And these okay. people now, oh, they want to backtrack and now they want to fix this and they want to fix that. After they have caused this disaster that we are now facing in many cities, not only in Minneapolis, in many cities. New York City, I think, took, what, a billion dollars or something or some, some number like that out of their budget, out of the police budget. And look at what's going on in New York City. Crime is rising. Yeah. We are seeing rises in crime here that we haven't seen in, in decades I think in, in this particular article, they said 26 years that we mm -hmm. haven't seen this level of crime. 
And these people who want to take us to their utopia still would not sit down and reflect upon the damn nonsense they've been giving us here for the last 10 years. God help us. Well, you know, if they are going to defund the police, how are they going to collect all those guns? <laughs> you know, I mean, unless they're expecting people to just, uh, the law abiding people to just hand oh, them over, sure. I guess. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's another aspect to this whole crazy defund the police, and maybe we'll just touch into it. And that's a not 14th Amendment thing that you were just talking about, Tim. And that's uh, treating people differently under the law. And, uh, in right. Seattle, they were big proponents as well of defund the police, and they are talking about trying to reorganize their their union agreements and stuff so that they can literally just go and fire white officers that have seniority. Because recently, yes. uh, the new cops that they have, uh, you know, uh, have hired, they've managed to get the uh, right mix of diversity, you know, as far as the racial aspects that they're looking for. But then those will be the first out under the union <laughs> as well so so they literally want to just go and say hey you're white you're older we're just going to fire you and that's what they're trying to do i don't think they're going to be able to do it but uh you guys have any quick thoughts on that uh, my, you my only, yeah my only point was uh that it's in violation of 14th amendments yes equal protection clause and uh it is therefore uh you know because we're talking a whole government thing here even if it wasn't, I mean, it was a private entity that, uh, you know, there's there's plenty of laws on the books about uh, non-racial bias in hiring and firing. So um, that's a racial bias, 100 percent. <laughs> you just can't make this stuff up anymore. Exactly. It's unbelievable. Go ahead, Leon. Mm. Could, could you imagine, could you imagine that some distinguished Republican or some well-known Republican said, let's solve the problem in our cities by firing all the black police officers. <laughs> could you imagine what would happen if that was said? <laughs> but here is have this woman. She could say oh, this yeah. and without consequences. This is madness. <laughs> this is insanity <sighs> on steroids. Well, but I see knucklehead knock, uh, noise patrol. Yeah, so I was just going to say, speaking... Time. Speaking of madness, uh, let's let's jump right into our uh, knucklehead noise patrol from that time in our show where we try and look for uh, uh, something kind of outlandish or silly that somebody has said. And this time it's a little bit more interesting. Uh, so I'm going to pull up a picture of the quote. Uh, this time it comes from Ayanna uh, Presley, Presley. Uh, one of the squad and uh, uh, on Capitol Hill. And so she is a congresswoman who, um, you know, often has... A lot of kind of uh, well, I, I think most of us would agree bad ideas, <laughs> but but uh, yeah, she was recently quoted on Twitter as saying Twitter a place of just you know, immense, I guess, wisdom, <laughs> or immense questionable <laughs> wisdom. Uh, you know, the wisdom you'd want to flush down the toilet in <laughs> twenty seconds. Or something. Indeed, but Indeed. Uh, but uh, she she recently said poverty is not naturally occurring. It is a policy choice. And that's kind of an interesting question because, I mean, one, I, I, I think on the face of it, historically, it, it's clearly wrong in the sense that, you know, poverty, you know, you go back thousands of years in our history and that's the natural state of humanity, you know, yeah. living, coming out of caves and, you know, uh, <laughs> wherever people were, you know, existing primitively. And it's a struggle to to get away from poverty. And I think markets have done a lot to help us do that. But, uh, uh, you know, for her, this is all about a policy choice. And so you guys want to want to kind of dive into that one. This uh, leaves a little bit of uh, ambiguity here. Well, I just wanted to. So you, you brought up the first thing I was going to say, because I agree and I disagree. So, um, you know, where I disagree is like what you said, uh, economic history shows that uh, the default uh, position is one of scarcity. We don't have we, we, we don't have what we want. You know, we have unlimited wants and needs, uh, but we we have a scarcity of uh, of uh, of wealth in in uh, things that we have to buy and eat and consume and blah, blah, blah. So uh, economically, she's uh, poverty is the most naturally occurring thing I can think of. And on the flip side of it. It is a policy choice as well. I mean, how about the policy of the um, minimum wage? Uh, you know, Representative uh, Presley, uh, 
What about that policy, you idiot? Uh, now that has given brought um, uh, unemployment to, to countless numbers of, of people that, that are in their early stages of life where they're trying to get from scarcity to, to wealth uh, and, and they're not even given a chance, okay? Then um, what about the drug war, you idiot? You know, how much uh, wealth has to be squandered trying to keep people from, from uh, you know, altering their consciousness? Um, you know, so, so you're right. It's a choice there, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't stop that, would you, you idiot? Well, in, and in how, about, to, how about wars? How about I, wars as a policy choice? Wars have, have sucked up enormous trillions of dollars of wealth and spread it around the world in the form of bullets and bombs, just, you know, willy-nilly. For Does she ever vote against a war? I doubt it. Okay, Leon, take it away. Oh, well, I just wanted to jump in real quick here. I think in mm. fairness to her, she probably would not support the war on drugs. I'm just guessing. I, I don't know for sure, but most likely she's not a huge proponent of the war on drugs. I, uh, I, you might be guessing. surprised, but yeah. I have to check. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I don't know, Jason. Um, okay. You no, know, I'm talking, I am I'm not talking sure. About, this, go ahead, I'm Tim, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, Leanne. I, I'm talking about, uh, would she vote to legalize uh, heroin and cocaine ever? I doubt it. Go ahead, Leanne. Okay. Now, her statement, poverty is not a naturally naturally occurring. You know, I am not sure that she is wrong on that statement, okay? And let me tell you why I'm saying that. Because I do not believe there's anybody who is born with something stamped on their forehead or in their genes that makes them automatically poor. Poverty to me is caused by governments all the time, by government choices at all times. So for instance, for instance, let us look, say, for instance, the difference in outcomes between East Germany and West Germany. So West Germany took a more capitalistic route out of uh, 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 after World War out of, after World War II. East Germany, where you know the people are the same, you know you can't you can't say anything that was different fundamentally about the people, but they took a, a socialist. Uh, um, a route out of out of World War II, but East Germany, when the wall came down, was in sheer poverty, and West Germany was one of the most successful nations in the world at the time. So, in that sense, in that sense, mm -hmm. poverty is not a naturally occurring is not a natural occurring naturally occurring uh, phenomenon that yeah. people. Government make choices that causes poverty here in the United States. Here in the United States. Well, Leon, I'm sorry, but I think we're just about out of time. <laughs> we're going to have to Damn. This <laughs> I, I agree with that. We, we, we've got a we've got a policy yeah. choice, and it's to meet the time. <laughs> and you and you're going to exercise executive executive and uh, executive decision <laughs> on my I'm statements. Impoverish <laughs> our listeners by ending the show. However, I hope that you'll continue to discuss this one at home. This is actually a pretty interesting quote, and please continue to join us for our next show. And you can catch us at uh, knuckleheadsofliberty.com and at libertariancounterpoint.com. See you at the next yeah. one. See you at the next one.